Uh, so on, uh, so on screen. So anytime you want to set a screen, if you let's say you're over here, right? You're playing defense on Tim. Yeah, that's fine. You're playing defense on Tim. If you, everybody knows what a blind screen is, you kind of you want to. If you're trying to set a blind screen, you can't go all the way up on him and set the screen. That's illegal, right? Because he doesn't know you're coming. That's why it's called a blind screen. So basically, what you have to do, you have to give him a step to either stop or change direction. That's that's how the rule reads, right? So you have to give him a step. So so if my man wanted to take a step back, right? He has that freedom of movement to t to step and then react. Whereas if we come all the way up on him, he can't react, right? So that so that, that puts that puts him at a disadvantage and, and us at, a, at an advantage, and we can't have that because it has to be fair for both offense and defense, right? So anytime you come up on a blind screen, give him a step so he can stop and or change direction. Now, if you're coming up on the side, you can you can come all the way up on him prior to making contact, right? I can't initiate the contact because that's an illegal screen, right? But I can come up as, as close as I want to because he can see me now. I come up as close as I want to and set the screen here, right? The one thing that we don't want to do is come set the screen, push to get open, right? Because now what does that do with him and him? It creates a disadvantage that now he can't guard him because I pushed off, right, to create it. And so now he's got the jump shot, the drive, or he's got me on the roll, right? So just make sure that we don't do anything where we extend, right? We call it elbow to wrist. Anytime you extend elbow to wrist, right, it's gonna be an offensive foul, right? So we, don't, we wanna make sure that we don't extend, right, um, that we don't, we don't booty bump him, anything to knock him off his path, right? We can't do that as, as screeners. So that was a good segue because when we teach students, so like going back into that continuation, mm -hmm. attacking the basket, let's say you're playing I'm big on, on the way we pick up the ball. Okay. You know, guys watch James Harden a lot. He talks about putting pressure on the referee. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I open him up, kind of, can you walk us through in terms of the, the initial contact? So if I'm coming up, let's say I pick up the ball with his hands. Yep. And is this a legal move for me to get this inside form mm -hmm. to kind of push out and carve that space between me and the defender? Okay. Consider the offensive foul. So, yeah. Yeah, so, th so that, that depends on, on the severity of that, of that contact. What, what does it create, right? So, so if, if I kind of go into him slightly and he's able to ma maintain his balance and, and his defensive positioning, then we don't have anything, right? Obviously, unless he retaliates back at me and it knocks me off balance. Now we got something different. But if, if I do something into him where I knock him off his block, right, and now I create the advantage for the jump shot, then the onus is on me as the offensive player, right? So anytime offensive player goes in and, and seeks out contact or creates contact, you got two options. As a referee, you got two options. Either it's a no call or it's an offensive foul, right? So anytime you have the ball and you're, and you're planning on doing a move like that, just make sure that, that whatever you're doing, that you keep your arms closer and you can, you can go out here, but you can't extend out here, right? So I, I can come in and, and make this contact here and go up, right? Because I'm just, I'm just holding my space. Does that make sense? Right, but I, but I can't extend through. You have two hands on the ball. Mm -hmm. Can I push out as far as I need to? No, no, you can't. See, and the, and the thing is, players think that they got two hands on the ball, they can't create an offensive foul. How can I do it? Both hands are on the ball, right? But you can also use the ball as a weapon, right, or mask it and, and make, the, make it seem like the referees can't see you pushing off with the ball or, or even going like this, right? So you can't, you can't do anything to initiate in, into the defender, especially if he's legal. You know what I'm saying? So you can't use the ball as a weapon or, or as a, a means to create space. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, th yeah these are also a no-no, right? Elbows, you know, normally are here. Anytime you, your elbows come out, and especially if you're looking, I'm seeking him out, right, and I'm coming this way, that's, that's offensive foul, and we're going to look for a flagrant. And it's probably going to be a flagrant, too, and you're going to be gone. You know what I mean? Because what happens, and, and, here, and here's part of the premise on that. What happens if, if I do this here, right, and then I just get a flagrant one, right, and I stay in the game, right, but that's your teammate. What you going to do the next time you get an opportunity to me? Now, old school hoop, right? Let's keep, keep it real, right? Somebody, there's going to be an enforcer on somebody's team, and that person is going to try to do it to me or, or my teammates, right? Right. So as referees, we try to prevent all that. Right now, obviously, we still have to go off of where does he make contact? Does he seek him out? 
Is it unnecessary and excessive, which is our rules, right? Unnecessary is a flagrant one. Unnecessary and excessive is a flagrant two, right? Is it a basketball move? Does it, does it, does it give him like bodily, arm, bodily injury or could, it have, or could it have led to bodily injuries, right? So we take a lot of that stuff into account when we're deeming flagrant fouls, right? But anytime I come up here to the face and I hit him, especially if I seek him out, he's gonna go, right? Yeah. Uh, what's the rules on like the hand checks and like on the perimeter? Yep, yep, yep. So, um, Okay, so, so that, that's a great question, actually. So if we, if we take the whole court, it's sectioned off, right? So it's like a red, a yellow, and a green section. Just think of it as a stoplight, right? So these are, we call these contact guidelines. These are our contact guidelines. So baseline in the backcourt, all the way up to the free throw line, extended, right? We call that the, the red zone, basically. So with that, we, we you can do a tactile touch. I can come up to you and I can kind of like touch you a little bit, maybe you know, a little far on my back off. I can do that, right? Is that, rely, is that the same if you're driving too? Like you can get a little touch in? And you, you can get a little drive? touch in, correct. You can get a little touch in, but what you can't do, you, I, I can't guide you somewhere as a defender. I can only gauge where you're going. That's our freedom of movement, we call it FOM, freedom of movement, right? So anywhere from the baseline and the backcourt to the free throw line extended, you can only do tactile touch. I can only just touch him a little bit, right? And just kind of gauge what he's doing, right? Just to feel him that he's there, right? Anything more than that, two hands extended, you re you're leaning on him, anything like that, foul, right? So then we have our yellow area, which is free throw line extended below, but outside of the LDB, right? So, th so those ones, you get the ball here in the, in the post, you can put the forearm on the back, you know, he comes up to the, to the front, you facing, now you gotta let go. So you get a little bit more contact, right? And, and just talking about post-ups and what you can and can't do, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the LDB. But, but he can put his forearm on my back, right? You can't put two of the same. So you can't put two forearms or two hands and you can't extend, right? So if he wanted to extend his arm on me, you know, he, he can't do that, right? So you can't do two or one, but he can do a bent forearm, a bent forearm and a hand, right you can do those things you can do one of each but you can't do both two of the same right so so he's here as soon as i face up he's got to he's got to let go right so we got to talk about that freedom of movement so once i face up freedom of movement right now if we get inside the ldb so if i if i get a a, a post up here on the block he can go two hand i mean he can go one of each he can go one op, one open hand here on my back and one forearm Right, so you can put that, that opposite, you can put that a hand on me too. Just holding his position, he can do that. Yep, you can do one of each, but he can't do two of the same, right? You, yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't do that, you gotta go here. So, so if, he, if he has the ball, I can, I can go like this and hold my spot, right? Here's, my, here's my, my arm bar bent, right? Anytime I extend issues, if I come with a knee and I, and I supplant him, you know, I lift him up with my knee, can't do that either. Right? So, so yeah, so it's, it's one of each. So if he starts backing me down, right, I'm here, and then I can, I can do that. Right? You guys, you guys know about that sweep, right?